Joan of Arc Chapel is perhaps the most recognizable place on Marquette's campus and is unarguably the most common place to take pictures. The chapel is currently dedicated to the French saint Joan of Arc, a French martyr who was burned at the stake in 1431 and is now the patron saint of France. The chapel itself has a longer and more complicated history than even Joan of Arc. At the time she prayed there, the parish was dedicated to the memory of St. Martin de Cesuel. It is believed to have been constructed in 1420, but became dilapidated through hundreds of years of use and war. For 500 years, it remained in its original birthplace in the village of Chass in the Rhone Valley, southeast of Lyon, becoming more run down as the years went by. In the 1920s, architect and historian Jacques Coulet found the ruined chapel and began making various measurements of the size, shape, and number of stones the chapel still had. He described it as the most absolutely unique monument of its kind. Gertrude Hill Gavin, an avid Joan of Arc enthusiast, heard the news about the chapel and began to have it transferred from her home in Long Island, New York. Along with the chapel, Gavin also purchased and had shipped to the U.S. a French Renaissance chateau, which was built on the same property as the chapel. After these purchases, France made it illegal for such practices of buying and shipping national treasures abroad. Gavin renamed the 500-year-old chapel in honor of her favorite saint when it was brought to Long Island and rebuilt it with other historic building materials, given the name it is now known by the Joan of Arc Chapel. In 1933, the rebuilt chapel was granted permission by Pope Pius XI to have mass said within it. During this time, Gavin was able to purchase a 13th century Gothic altar and received the Joan of Arc stone. No one knows for sure how the stone came to be a part of the chapel, as they likely joined together when they were both brought to New York. But there's evidence to say that, the jo that Joan of Arc prayed at both the chapel as well as the stone itself, even though they were in different places. To their credit, both of these artifacts were authenticated by French endorsement. The stone's connection to Joan of Arc is somewhat contested, but the common story is that she prayed on a specific slab of stone, kissing that stone, causing it to be considerably colder than the surrounding stones. It is believed this is where she prayed to the Virgin Mary, kissing the aforementioned stone, causing it to be colder. Even today, people are allowed to go and touch the stone in the back of the chapel. Gavin later hired a Boston artist by the name of Charles Connick and commissioning him to create a stained glass window for the chapel that would be authentic and accurate to the time period of medieval France. For about 40 years, Gavin held the chapel until in 1962, when due to her death, the estate was sold. The chapel with the chateau went to a man named Mark Reutemann. An interesting story, apparently five days before Reutemann and his wife moved into the new house with the chateau and the chapel, a fire started and destroyed the house. But thankfully and miraculously, the chapel was saved from the fire. The Reutemanns did not keep the chapel for very long. Soon, they were attempting to find a new home for this sacred chapel. They soon wrote a letter to former market president, Reverend O'Donnell. The Reutemanns wanted a place where they knew the chapel would be appreciated for its historic and artistic value, but also added in a provision that it would be used for worship. In this letter, Reutemann wrote to O'Donnell, he said, I am sure you fully understand that this chapel means far more to me than any donation I have ever made and transcends by far any mere monetary value. Reutemann wanted the chapel to be used for religious purposes, and knew Marquette would be the perfect home for such a unique masterpiece. After Marquette accepted this monumental gift in 1964, the process of transferring one of the oldest buildings in America from Long Island to Milwaukee began. It was a slow and arduous process, taking about nine months to meticulously take the stones apart. The workers had to mark each piece specifically to remember its placement for when it would be rebuilt in Milwaukee. By 1966, the chapel had been disassembled and rebuilt within Marquette's campus. A few minor changes were made when it was reassembled in Milwaukee, such as a longer walkway to the altar, a heated floor for the priests and brothers who would commonly attend and say mass at the chapel. In 2018, a recent renovation was completed. Current Marquette president Mike Lovell commissioned this Marian Grotto as an addition to this beautiful space around the chapel. This chapel is the heart and soul of Marquette's campus a place recognizable by generations of alumni, faculty, staff, and various other visitors. Joan of Arc is an amalgamation of various different architectural styles and time periods. Entering through the doors makes you feel like you've entered that very different time period. Marquette can feel like home to so many people, such as myself, since I've been coming to this campus since I was a little kid. And this chapel is one of the best and easiest reasons to call Marquette home.
Joan of Arc Chapel Fast Facts is the oldest chapel within Wisconsin and the U.S. because from the Old World, the oldest structure in the Western Hemisphere still used for its original purpose. The chapel is celebrating 600 years. The original purpose has never changed. The chapel has numerous medieval graffiti marks from its origin in France. A ladder which represents climbing away from sin, referenced in the Bible as Jacob's Ladder. A pentagonal five-pointed star, today which represents new paganism, but it was considered a protective symbol for Christians as cited in Gawain and the Green Knights. For our purposes, it is meant to symbolize the five senses, the five wounds of Jesus, and the five joys of Mary. There are more graffiti marks whose meaning have been lost in time. They are the only European medieval graffiti marks in their original context in the U.S. Inside the chapel used to rest the tomb of Chevalier de Sature, a former Chatelain of Chasse, governor of the castle of Chasse, a comrade of the knight Bayard, also known as the knight without fear and beyond reproach, as well as the good knight.